Okay, so. My gosh, last night, Bible study was the bomb. We're still doing this, um. lesson on prayer. I mean, this is really, really powerful, powerful, powerful Bible study. And I just think that what God is doing with our particular body is just awesome right now. Just, it's just awesome. Not only is the church being renovated or going to be renovated, but we are actually being renovated as well. Um, First, that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. So the first natural would be the church building itself. Uh, we're getting ready to go into renovations, and and we'll have to have services um, at another facility for about six to eight weeks while our church is being renovated. And this is just the most awesome time for us. And, and during the preparations for the renovations, God has been doing a new thing in us as his people uh, in this particular uh, assembly or a particular assembly of people. And so it's just been awesome to see the metamorphosis and the changes that are going on uh, in the body of believers that I fellowship with. And I thank God for it because it's a tremendous time for us. And I'm so glad that I'm a part of the remnant uh, that will be able to see what, you know, is going on. Like many years ago, my dad and them were this age and, and we were younger. And we thought that <laughs> at my, my father passed at 52, forever 52. And I thought when he passed, I thought that he was old. I don't know why I thought that, but I thought 50 was old for some reason. And uh, until I got there, uh, I thought 52 was old until I reached 52. And I found out, oh my God, dad was in the prime of his life when he left here. And, you know, he, oh my goodness, it was just, it's really weird how your mind thinks when you're young like that. And you don't even uh, uh, filter in death or, uh, you know, people not being with you. It's like almost uh, uh, you think that they're going to be with you always. And the very nucleus of my family um, has transitioned, you know. My goodness, my grandfather, my grandmothers, my, my mother, two of my sisters, my father, um, close relatives, cousins, and things like that that I grew up with and we were intact for so many years, I guess I felt like nobody was ever going to go anywhere and nothing was going to happen to any of us. And when it did and it started happening like, bam, 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 you know, I was almost, you know, at a loss. But at any rate, I thought that was old, but it's not. And I am 61 now and I am in a place where I am seeing God move and work and actually come into being who he's called me to be in him. And I'm, I'm just in a state of tremendous gratefulness, just grateful and appreciative of God and who he is in my life and how I held on to him. And when I was younger uh, and in school, um, I was in the church. I was around the church. I called myself saved, but at that time, I really wasn't what we call saved. Um, I was in learning stages, still in learning stages, but more uh, committed and more into understanding of what it is that I'm doing, what it is I'm searching for, what it is I'm going into, and that's God. And I, I, I just thank him for it. I really, really do. And I thank him for being in this assembly at such a time as this, for this transformation that's taken place within the natural church and within the church body. My goodness, my goodness. And so Bishop has been preach, teaching rather on prayer and the different uh, facets of prayer and how to pray and, and what even to pray. 
and it's just been powerful. Last night, my spirit, I'm telling you, you know, when, when the scripture says that, that Mary went to go visit Elizabeth and they were both pregnant with a child. And as Mary was approaching Elizabeth, Elizabeth felt the child leap within her womb. I'm telling you, last night at Bible study, my spirit leapt up within me like, oh my God, this is it. Drink, 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 drink the word. Oh, I was just like a dry sponge, just soaking up that powerful, powerful word of God. And I so appreciate it. I just wanted to uh, thank God for that on this morning and just talk about it because it's just so in my spirit. It is so in my spirit what we talked about on last night. And I would to God that we had taped it, uh, but we don't take Bible studies um, so that the lesson itself could be shared and the different uh, uh, things that people were saying and the people that were saying them and how they were saying them and how they were conveying it and get it across. And you just knew it was God. You just knew it was God. And I couldn't contain myself any longer. I said, my goodness, my spirit is just about to burst. This thing is just, I don't know if you feel what I'm feeling, but what I'm feeling, I, I want you to feel it. I want a tag. You're it. You know, I want you to feel what it is that I'm feeling. And I know many of them could not, some of them could. But anyway, to each his own as you receive what it is that you get from God. But I'm just the kind of person I like to share, share, share the goodness, the goodness of God. And so that's what I'm doing on this morning. And as we were talking about prayer, he had gathered up all the scriptures of God saying, uh, ask what you will in my name and I will do it. And even at a point where on the Tuesday before last, when the scripture was read, where Jesus told the disciples, here to now, you have not asked anything in my name. He said, but ask that your joy may be full. Amen. And when he encouraged them to ask, what he was saying was, ask me something, ask me anything so I can do it for you so that your understanding and your, your, uh, uh, the reality of what I'm saying to you will be complete. You'll come into the fullness of the understanding that what you ask me to do, I will do it for you. And, and some of the members, you know, got to breaking it down. Well, that's if you ask anything that, that, you know, is, is, um, in his will. And if you, 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 you can't just ask anything. And that's true. You can't ask amiss. When you ask amiss, that means you are asking for something that you don't have any real understanding of what you're asking for it for, or what it can do for you. You're just asking for it because you think it's a good thing to do, or because you think that, um, it'll bring you prestige or it'll, you know, do something for you that, you know, naturally you want done. So don't ask amiss, but ask with understanding and expectation. Amen. When the, when the, when the man at the gate who was crippled, when he looked to Jesus, he looked to him with expectation. He was looking for uh, God to do something for him. Amen. And so when, I mean, not God, but Peter, to do something for him. And so when Peter uh, stretched out his hand, because the man was usually looking for silver, gold, or some kind of monetary uh, gift, and Peter stretched out his hand and said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I'll give to you. And he reached out his hand and he said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And immediately that man got up and began to walk. He leaped up. The Bible said he leapt up and began to walk. Well, my God, my God. I mean, just anything that you say in 
Jesus' name. And that name, again, we've gone over this before, <clears throat> that name means nature. Anything you say in his nature, in his character, in his dutimous power, that means in his powerful power, he will do for you. He will do it. When we're praying for our loved ones who are sick and we want God to bring about healing, we have got to pray believing and God is going to answer his word. God is going to answer his word. If you pray believing, God is going to answer you. And that individual that you're praying for is going to be healed because of the prayers of the righteous that avail much. But you have to pray believing that's the key. A lot of us pray and we pray because we've been told to pray and we don't know how to pray and we don't know what to say when we pray. And we don't understand the authority and the power that we have when we pray. And that's the key to the prayer. It's a collective collage of thoughts, desires, and mind, will, and power. Lord, I need you to do this for me. According to your word, your will, your way. I know that you're able. I know you can do it. This is what I'm expecting you to do. I dispatch angels right now in the name of Jesus to carry out the request that I'm petitioning you for. And the work is already done. And you've got to believe that. And that's where we falter. We don't have that strong faith that we need. Why would you ask God to do something and then don't believe he's going to do it? When you ask your mother, or when you ask your father to do something, you believe that they're going to do it for you. Mom is going grocery shopping and you have a request. Mom, can you add some soda to the list? I'd like some soda, some chips, you know, some junk food. And when you say that to her and you know that she hears you, you go on about your business because you know that when mom comes back from the store, you're going to run out and help bring in them groceries because why? You're looking for your request to be fulfilled in those bags. And that's faith. And you take that same type of faith when you pray and you ask God for whatever it is that you're asking him for, according to his word. And you have that same expectation. You have that same looking for. Because God is your father. And he will honor your request. Anything that you ask in my name. Whatsoever you ask in my name. Those were the scriptures. Oh my God. I'm telling you, when I'm driving, I don't have the word with me, of course. And my phone is sitting on an apparatus on my uh, dashboard. So I, I can't tell you the exact scripture, but I know St. John is full of the, you can ask what you will and ask me and, and whatever it is I'll do in my name. St. John is full of it. Matthew has a lot of it. These are the scriptures that we went through on last night, but I can't remember the scripture verse verbatim, but it ain't going to hurt you to get in the word of God and read for yourself and come across them. Because it's needful in this day and time, in this last day, it is needful that we understand the authority that we have in prayer and the power that has been given to us by virtue of the Holy Ghost that dwells on the inside of us to heal those that we love that are sick. Now, if it's, if it's time for them to go and God is saying, I'm, I'm bringing them home, there's, there's nothing, you know, that you can do, you know, about that, but prepare yourself. 
and ask God to give you strength and grace and mercy because we don't want you to think that that you know there's when God set a seal on something you know then the seal has been set but I'm talking about, you know, someone that just becomes, you know, ill or someone that's struggling or having a heart attack or whatever the situation may be. And you set your voice out into the open, amen, in prayer, supplication and request so that them angels can be dispatched and go and do the work. Amen. Amen. We are powerful human beings with the Holy Ghost. And God said in his word, they that know their God, huh? those that have been intimate with God, those that have been uh, in relationship with God, those that have been in communion with God, those that know their God shall do exploits. Amen? And, and people don't understand that. What is exploits? What does no mean? They, they that know their God. A lot of people think that they know God, but when you sit down and you start getting in that word, you find out, oh man. Whew. These are scriptures we've been reading and reading for years. And now all of a sudden, the very letters of the words are jumping off the pages saying, hey, now is the time. Now is the appointed time for these scriptures to become life in your life. Now is the appointed time for you to apply these scriptures that you're receiving in your everyday life. And you don't want to miss the illumination of God. You don't want to miss the timing of God. God does everything in timing. In timing. Amen. In timing. And so for us as a body of believers to come together and be receiving this life-changing word, again, the change is going on naturally or getting ready to start naturally in the church, but it's already beginning in us spiritually. What a correlation, what a reality, what an analogy. It's real though. My God, it's real. And so I'm so glad, so glad to be a part of this. On my way to work this morning, my soul is illuminated. I tell you the things that God is just doing. I couldn't even hardly sleep last night. So much of the word and what I received and how it's affected my life, just going through my body in constant prayer. I don't think I lost consciousness and sleep at all last night. <laughs> I don't think I did, and, and I'm not tired this morning. I may get a little sleepy during the day today, but right now, you know, I'm not. I'm still feeling that excitement, still feasting off of that good manna that came down from heaven on last night. Bible study and Sunday school, these are the very important things of God. These are the intimate sessions uh, that you have with God besides prayer, supplication and communication, Sunday school and Bible study. Get in it. Get in the word of God because God is his word. His word is bond, man. His word is bond. If you don't understand nothing else, you got to know that his word is bond. He will do just what he says. He is God. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. And his word is not going to return unto him void. It's not going to return unto him empty. It's not going to return unto him incomplete. But it's going to do what it's been sent out to do. And you got to have faith to believe that that's the whole key. And everything that you do is faith. You, got to, you can't even worship God unless you believe that he is. The scripture says you got to believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. And that word diligently or diligent means careful or carefully. You carefully seek him. He is a rewarder. The scripture says he that hunger and thirst after righteousness 
shall be filled. Somebody said, what is righteousness? Righteousness is right doing. He that hunger and thirst after righteousness, the righteousness of God's word, the righteous way of living, the right way of living, the right way of doing things. He that hunger and thirst after that, he that desires that with an intent desire, you're going to be filled because that's all God wants is for you to be filled with his word, to know him, to understand the good things that he has in store for you. This world is not it. It is not it. Even the good in this world and the good that we do in this world, the scripture says, is as filthy rags. Amen. And we discussed filthy rags before. If you go in your garage, you'll find some filthy rags where your dad or your uncle or your brother been working on the car and there's some old oily rags in the corner. They're filthy. Not only are they oily, but they got dust on them and, and they're hard and crunchy and they're filthy. They're not fit to be in the house. They're just filthy. And that's what our righteousness is, our good doings that just come from our heart. We think we're doing so good and we're smiling and it's just filthy rags because it's of us and there's no good thing in us, no good thing in our flesh. But the good thing on the inside of us is the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, but you're not righteous on your own. You're not righteous on your own. So you don't want to be under that mistaken thought pattern. You don't want to be on that at all. Anyway, I'm on my work this on my way to work this morning. I'm singing in my soul. I'm excited. I thank God for Jesus. I thank Jesus for God. I thank God for me. I thank God for allowing me to be awakened this morning. I thank God that right now I'm clothed in my right mind. Um, I thank God that I know him, have a relationship with him. I thank God that he takes me over these dangerous highways every single solitary morning that I go down them. He keeps me. He keeps me and he keeps me. And I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. Hallelujah to God. I give him praise, honor, and glory. There's no God like my God. Hallelujah to Jesus. There is no God like my God. Hallelujah. My God is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the creator and maker of the universe. I serve him. He lives on the inside of me and I'm so glad. I'm so grateful. I'm so humbled. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the spirit of the living God that dwells on the inside of me. And you can have it, too. If you don't have it, you can. Amen. You can. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy, your kindness. New mercies every morning. Amen. I'm traveling down this highway on new mercies. Not the mercies that I had on yesterday, but these are new mercies that I have. Hallelujah, that he affords to me every morning. And not to me only, but to you as well. Wake up, realize, hallelujah, that the God you serve or the God that you can serve, he loves you and he's able to deliver you out of the hand of the fowler. Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I serve him. I serve him. I serve the Lord. Hallelujah. With gladness. Hallelujah. With gladness. Yes, with gladness. Amen. I love God. I love you. I love myself. Today is a day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We're going to go forth in the things that we've been taught. We're going to live. Hallelujah. By way of the Bible. The Bible says in the beginning was the word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let the Word of God become flesh in you today. 
allow your flesh to apply the word of God which is applicable in every single solitary situation there is no situation or circumstance too hard for God it might be too hard for you you may not can conceive it but it's not too hard for him turn it over to him and let him allow it to become reality in your life amen may the Lord God bless you real good on this morning peace and peace be multiplied in Jesus name amen